Jennifer Chat. This is Cole here, and I first wanted to apologize for not making a video last week. Um, I've had some some stuff happen in my personal life that's kind of um, t had taken its toll on me last week, so I was unable to post. Um, uh, but I really loved everyone's video. Uh, I thought about making a video for it, but I really think everyone said anything that I would have I would have said. It was everybody did such a great job last week on their videos, so. No big deal, but this week um, we're talking about um, uh, if genderqueer people are more likely to struggle with depression, and if so, to what extent do they feel that mental health professionals understand their struggles and provide appropriate and adequate support. And this is actually a viewer topic, so I really love these because it's from you guys, and I always want to give my opinion on stuff that you guys want to hear about. Um, I don't have a lot of scientific um, data to back up what I'm going to say. Everything I'm saying is based on opinion and based on what I have observed in my life. So um, I don't know if there is scientific data out there. If there is, I would love for you guys to comment below and um, share with me any scientific evidence on on this topic because I think it, it would be an interesting thing. I don't know if they've I done think the that research yet. Gender but. variance of any kind, um, whether it be being genderqueer or non-gendered or trans, is a difficult thing to manage mentally in this specific society. Um, I guess I'd be speaking of um, the only society that I've had um, direct contact with, which would be American society. Um, this is the only place I've lived long term to be able to observe these, these types of things. And I think it's a difficult thing to manage mentally in this society um, because sometimes there's not adequate language for it. And I know that um, Zane Laura Gabriel talks a lot about um, Brazil and how they don't really have genderqueer as there's no word in Portuguese for that. Um, and I know that although we have the word genderqueer and trans, there's still sometimes not adequate language for some people to describe their identity. Um, and then also on top of that, there's really no um, visible community outside of the internet for a lot of people. Um, most of the people that I come in contact with, of course, are from the South. Um, and honestly, unless you're in a, a city, it's really, um, there's just really not any kind of community for you to look at and see what where you fit in or that there's other people that you know relate to you um, but that's thankfully now there is the internet and that's a, such a great tool for people that don't have uh, aren't constantly surrounded by minority um, gender minorities or things like that um, I mean I know because of there being no visible community and for some people no adequate language or very little, isolation can definitely um, take its toll more easily than say if somebody was constantly surrounded by um, gender variance or gender variance acceptance or even you know a lot of education and constant immersion in um, questioning those types of things. Um, now. As far as the second part of the question about medical professionals and do you think that they understand the struggles of genderqueer people and provide appropriate and adequate support, um, again, this is my um, just from my observations. Um, I have had um, four total friends of mine transition by means of um, uh, hormone replacement therapy. Um, and they had to go through a medical professional first before obtaining this. And they've had varying stories. Um, one of them went to out of state to a specialist that actually specialized in gender hormone therapy replacement, gender reassignment. Um, and that was a positive experience. The other three were either negative or the doctor took a really long time to give them the permission, like a year or two years. Um, so I've heard you know that sometimes the doctors can be a little bit cold but that's I think doctors in general sometimes um, and that they just didn't really get it um, the therapists you know were having a hard time understanding um, a trans identity um, and this again isn't probably always the case this is just from the people's experiences that I've I've conversed with in the south um, the people that have transitioned around me um, are happy now and and everything went fine it's just you know it took a lot longer than it would in, in say other states or in Canada or other places um, I personally have dealt with depression and anxiety um, 
myself. A lot of that stems from my gender dysphoria and um, how I interact with um, people in social settings, especially those that are not aware of my gender identity. Um, I have been known to be a little bit socially paranoid in these types of situations, like with family or people that I feel like are judging me, um, and even if they probably really aren't. <laughs> Um, and I've definitely had panic attacks and been close to having panic attacks in these types of situations um, because I, the way I thought somebody was viewing me or judging me. Um, and I've gone through and, and been on medication before and diagnosed with this and that or the other and none of them really stuck or none of the medications really worked. Um, so that's been my experience. Um, I haven't had great experiences. I really feel like the problem um, is with the mental health system. In general, um, I mean, regardless of if you're gender queer or not, I mean, the mental health system is just really backwards these days. I mean, you spout off a few symptoms um, to the nurse, they spout that back off to the doctor, they come in and talk to you without making eye contact or treating you like a human, hand you some sedatives, <laughs> and not knowing your struggle, you know, your life, your background, what you're going through. I just, I don't think that's an acceptable type of situation. Um, I don't think that's beneficial. I think as a larger society, we really need to question if this is the right way to go about supporting um, people that can't cope, you know, with this insane amount of pressure to succeed in, in this country, in this society, to make money, to have the perfect family. Um, it's, you know, it's a fucking lot to live up to. And when you defy the social norms, like out, those outside the gender binary, um, and just those that, you know, defy society, I mean, it's just even harder to reach those goals when you don't fit in there. So that's my spiel, I guess, for this week. Um, I will see you guys next week and have a great one. Bye-bye.